This meeting of the Select Board is called to order on September 19th, 2023 at 6.01 p.m. This meeting is being held in person and or remotely as an alternate means of public access pursuant to Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023 and all other applicable laws, temporarily amending certain provisions of the open meeting law. You are hereby advised that this meeting and all communications during this meeting may be recorded by the Town of Hingham in accordance with the open meeting law. If any participant wishes to record this meeting, please notify the chair at the start of the meeting in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20. F, so that the chair may inform all other participants of said recording. Is anyone recording the meeting? Okay, seeing none, I will note for the record, participating this evening are myself, Liz Klein Chair, Joe Fisher, and Bill Ramsey. If you are willing and able, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next on the agenda is approval of minutes. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes dated August 29th, 2023. Second. Roll call vote, Joe? Aye. Bill? Aye. And I'm an I as well. I think we'll wait till next week to review the minutes of September 12th. Next on the agenda is recognition of Ella Zhu for the painted mural at Town Hall. Is Ella here? <laughs> Hi, do you wanna come up? Do you wanna kick us off, Michelle, and explain? Sure. Ella, we have to go to the podium. You wanna go right to the podium? Uh, I don't have a speed prepared. No, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason Ella is, is joining us this evening is um, she was kind enough to share her talent and expertise with the town and do a beautiful mural right outside um, on the um, one of the rec barns um, as part of a Girl Scout Gold Award, um, which if you're not familiar with, it takes a lot of dedication and a tremendous amount of work um, I don't know, Ella, if you want to add anything about what, what this process has been like, this project. Yeah, I mean, I, um, is the microphone, like, working? Yes. Okay. Uh, I want to say that, like, the town has been, like, very helpful and supportive from getting from step A to step B, in particular, like, um, Will Ramsey and uh, Tom Mayo have been really helpful. They've been, like, the ones who've been getting the painting onto the wall, so I want to thank them for that. Excellent, excellent. And it's not just a painting. Well, you can see it on the screen for the people that are, are in the room. Um, it's not just a beautiful piece of art, but also to illustrate the critical role of pollinators are an environment, in our environment and how important that is. So thank you. So the select board would like to present you with a certificate of recognition. Um, it reads, presented to Ella Zoo in recognition of the hand-painted mural at Hingham Town Hall. The select board on behalf of the town of Hingham hereby takes this opportunity to thank you for creating a bright and colorful mural of a pollinator garden at Hingham Town Hall. The eye-catching artwork illustrates the crucial role of pollinators are in our environment and has transformed an underutilized outdoor space at Town Hall into a beautiful passageway used by many staff, children, and visitors. We applaud your efforts to complete this project as part of the Girl Scout Gold Award, and we wish you continued success in the years ahead. Signed by myself, Liz Klein Chair, Joseph Fisher, and William Ramsey, dated September 19th, 2023. So congratulations, thank you so much. Thank you. Would you like to take a picture with your family yeah. up here? No. Come on up. Right. You'll have the seal behind you. Yes. Yeah, come right, right here. Right over here. Yeah, come around. Welcome, Ella's family. Congratulations. Congratulations. A little, a little more towards the center. Yeah. There we go. Let's center. Yeah. 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 Y
Sure. Do one more. Quick, quick, quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? 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 Ready
I think we'll get it by the end of 2024. Okay. Joe, do you have any questions or comments? Um, just a couple, Randy, but thank you for putting this together. Uh, on the first one, you said it was replacing um, a bucket truck. Is that right? Yes. So what, is, yes. what will happen to that vehicle? That will be traded in. Um, any sense of what the trade-in value will be? I do not until we're about to purchase the truck. They won't give us a value um, and stick to it when the truck comes in because we don't know when we're going to get it. Sure. So, but the 262 figure is the gross figure, and then what you actually pay may be less based on the trade in value. Is that fair? It, it could be, yes. Um, well, it will be unless the trade in value is zero. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Um, and for these three vehicles, what is the useful life of them? What are we expecting? We're expecting 10 years out of them. Um, it's, it's, when I started out 19 years ago, the replacement on these trucks was every six years. Yep. And um, that didn't seem realistic to me, budget-wise and vehicle-wise. Um, the problem with is when they go beyond 10 years, they start to cost a lot to keep repaired, and especially during the winter when we need them. Yep. That, that actually was going to go to my last question, which is what sort of uh, vehicle warranty uh, goes along with them so that at least there will be some period of time when if something breaks down, it's covered. Um, we have two of the trucks have three year warranty, and there's one truck that has two year warranty. Okay, and I assume those warranties are standard for these vehicles. Yes. Great. Um, well, I appreciate. It. I know that this is in the budget, and that the town does need these vehicles. So. You've answered all my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Bill, any questions or comments? I was going to ask about the life expectancy, but Joe beat me to it. But I, I do want to note, you know, it's great that we're finally addressing capital needs within DPW. For years, we have been deferring um, the uh, the buying of trucks that you needed for years, Randy. So this is great that we're finally getting some of the needs met. And I know that you um, must really appreciate the fact they're coming now. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Any questions or comments for members of the public? Anyone in the public want to ride shotgun? On the <laughs> <laughs> You're auctioning off rides. Right. <laughs> uh, so I'll move to authorize the town administrator to sign the agreement with Minuteman Truck doing business as Allegiance Trucks for three vehicles for the Public Works Department. 2024 Pro 60 Rear Mount Flatbed. 2024 GVW Catch Basin Cleaner and 2024 Snow Fighter Spec Dump Truck with sander and plow in an amount not to exceed $823,523.77. Second. Roll call vote, Joe. Aye. Bill. Aye. And I'm an eye as well. Passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, next on the agenda is the downtown Hingham traffic calming measures update, which I think is probably the reason most of you are here. So thank you for coming and participating. Um, as many of you know, this has been an ongoing discussion for some time. Certainly safety is of the highest priority of, of this board. Uh, the focus of this meeting is really to hear feedback. Uh, we are committed to the public process um, with any changes happening around towns, and specifically tonight we're talking about downtown. Uh, so in that, in spirit of that commitment, we want to hear from you, um, and we will certainly be listening this evening. Um, as a little bit of background, town meeting last April 2023 voted for 25 mile per hour speed limits in thickly settled districts and business districts. On June 6th, the select board voted to implement that and the permitted signs that are enforceable, which are the orange with the black writing, have been installed um, in downtown as well as the other neighborhoods that were approved. 
the select board asked the um, for the traffic comment traffic calming plan in downtown Hingham. That plan was presented at last week's select board meeting on September 12th. Um, and just for a little bit of background, I know traffic calming is not necessarily a term everybody's familiar with. Uh, traffic calming is a system that utilizes design strategy and physical adjustments to reduce traffic speeds for the sake of safety and accessibility. So that's really the main point. Um, those are things like speed humps, different types of signage, barriers, um, really resulting in lower speeds and, and in increased safety. And that's our focus. So for tonight, um, I'm going to ask J.R. Fry, the town engineer, to walk through updates since last week's meeting, um, including some speed data that's been collected, um, analysis from a consultant that we're working with, um, things that are kind of in progress, um, as well as some of the um, options that we're, we're considering from a historical perspective. I will then ask my colleagues, uh, Joe and Bill, to share their comments and questions, and then I will open it up for public comment. Since there are many people participating in the room as well as Zoom, um, I will ask you to please limit your comments to three minutes each um, in hopes that everybody gets an opportunity to share their unique perspective. We'll try to share new information and different information so we have the board walks away from this with a holistic view of, of all the different points and I, issues and suggestions. I will say if you're willing and able, um, please raise your hand in person or digitally if you hear something that you agree with to show support and we will make a note of that. So in, in, instead of feeling like you have to repeat a comment or something that's already been said, if you want to show support, we will record that in the, um, the public record. Uh, that just helps us move through the conversation, um, but also understand how many people feel the same way. So with that, JR, I will turn it over to you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Liz. Um, so if Michelle could bring up the PowerPoints quickly. Thank you. Um, and if we can just pop back. Yeah. So as we discussed last week, um, we, we can see uh, the generalized plan um, of elements of traffic calming that we're looking at. Um, we have placed the 25 mile per hour speed signs uh, as shown um, on the main throughways entering downtown. And you can see the locations, the four locations where we've installed uh, speed feedback signs. Um, last week, we also discussed that we are continuing to work on uh, a, um, an engineering design for the Fountain Square area um, that may uh, adjust uh, traffic flow and um, improve the, the intersection uh, capabilities there. And um, you can see that little uh, kind of a black flag that was placed at the uh, North Street and Main Street intersection as a um, kind of a placeholder for a possible uh, potential speed type table. Um, anything like that though at this point is kind of in our out year considerations as we evaluate uh, the effectiveness of the two pieces which we've implemented, which is establishing a 25 mile per hour speed limit and installing some speed feedback signs where we see uh, kind of uh, significant uh, traffic flow velocity. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> so uh, as follow up to last week's meeting, um, we brought in the Nesson Associates quickly uh, to begin reviewing uh, specifically the speed feedback locations and downtown speeds generally. Um, so what they did was they uh, went at each of the existing uh, feedback sign locations and took, um, and took uh, speed uh, readings for approaching vehicles and then 
uh, what the speed of those vehicles is uh, when they're at the sign. If not necessarily all the same vehicle. So they, they took, you know, 40 uh, speed readings ahead of the sign, and then they took 40 speed readings at the sign, but they don't necessarily represent the same 40 vehicles when they were doing that. Um, and then they also attempted to take speed readings uh, on North Street in that um, main to central corridor. Um, in that specific corridor, the speeds were so low when they were attempting to take the readings that they were unable to register on the radar gun. So a big reason for that is each of those intersections, north at Main and north at Central, have a lot of complex movements that are occurring, where you have parallel park traffic, um, you have uh, people making left turns coming out of Main and Central, and people making left turns off of North Street to enter Main and Central. You may also have backups from the intersections at South and Main and South and Central that impact uh, people's free movement uh, to leave that North, North Street intersection. Um, in addition to all of that, you, ha you have pedestrian traffic, uh, which we want to encourage, um, as well as occasionally uh, bicycling traffic that um, can impact uh, free movement through that, through that corridor. So I wanted to kind of highlight that while, um, while the speeds that they were measuring, they weren't really able to register them um, on their radar gun, but you still can have a perception of generally higher speeds. And a lot of that relates to impatience. So it relates to driver behavior. Impatience, um, drivers feeling the need to advance very quickly from a stop uh, in order to um, get their place in the in the moving traffic in the traffic flow. So <clears throat> I think sometimes when people talk about some some element of the perception of speed issues downtown. When they're talking about that particular corridor, I think a lot of it has to do with the uh, quick assertive movements um, rather than absolute speed. And there's a, a perception of a dangerous driver behavior. Um, so if we can, um, oh, as, as the rest of this states, uh, we also went through, we downloaded the um, statistical data that's collected by the speed feedback signs. And then um, we are in the process of revo reviewing poll options, um, as well as the, um, uh, Andrea Young has taken the lead in reviewing other communities' approaches uh, for how they handle these ty this type of signage within historic areas. Um, Obviously, we're reviewing uh, feedback that's been submitted by citizens, and we are working with our consultant to review um, potential alternative locations for the speed feedback signs if there are specific locations where they're currently installed that we uh, believe for one reason or another we need to revisit. So next slide, please. And I can quickly go over um, some of the uh, data that we received. Um, as you review this data, uh, one of the things that uh, you should note is that uh, at three of the locations, we saw between a one and two mile per hour reduction in the approach speed. Um, now, the part of the way to look at it is that not only did the person slow down a marginal amount, but really um, part of what we were looking for there 
was that they not continue to increase their speed as well. So the, um, for the North Street sign, which is just west of Fountain Square at, at, or the Lincoln Street intersection, those vehicles are approaching roughly within the posted or the not posted speed limit, the legal speed limit, um, which is 30 miles an hour as you uh, leave the Baxter Street intersection and head towards downtown. <clears throat> at the crosswalk in front of roughly um, 170 North, I believe, I'm sorry, 200 North, um, at the crosswalk in front of 200 North, that's where it changes to 20, a 25 mile an hour zone. And so the vehicles are entering the 25 mile an hour zone as they're being, um, as their speed is being measured by the, the radar sign. So um, that's kind of the context. And as you can see, you've got, what you have there is vehicles that were traveling at the, at the legal speed limit, and then now they're reducing their speed, entering a lower speed limit area, and they're approaching the legal speed limit in that, in that space. Uh, similarly, you see a similar uh, condition in South Street, where the vehicles are roughly traveling about the legal speed limit when they, as they approach the sign, and then once the sign is activated and they're slowing down, they're slowing down and towards the, uh, the legal speed limit, which is at the sign, which is 25 miles per hour. Um, at the Main Street sign, that's where we see the most significant effect right now. In part, that's because um, the vehicles traveling northbound on Main Street are, they, they come through that corridor, I'll characterize it briskly. And um, so as you can see, they, the average speed is well elevated uh, compared, or the 85th percentile speed is well elevated compared to the um, legal speed limit, which is uh, 25 miles per hour. So the, the approach speed is at about 34 miles per hour. And you see a five mile per hour drop as they um, enter the 25 mile per hour zone. So that's where we saw the most significant drop. So I think that's worth noting about that particular location um, is that the approach speeds are high and um, it's definitely getting driver's attention and they're slowing down to something that's much closer to the legal speed limit at that location. And finally, uh, the North Street westbound sign. So this would be the one uh, roughly at 25 North Street, um, just after the uh, Cafe Tosca. In that one, you can see that the approach speeds, uh, the 85th percentile approach speed is still just at 25 miles per hour. That is just about at the closest to the 3A intersection that we would want to locate the any type of speed feedback sign because at that point that's where they're that's where the vehicles are actually approaching their the legal speed limit and we're trying to um, calm them down from uh, any continued acceleration so that they'll maintain that speed or lower uh, going through the, the downtown business district. If you move that sign further forward, uh, two things will happen. The vehicles, as they approach the sign, will they'll either register, they either won't register a speed because the, the minimum speed that will be registered is nine miles per hour, or it'll be on the very low end, so up to say 15 miles per hour, and that's not going to give them the feedback that they need to take their foot off the accelerator. 
And so that's why um, the, where it's currently placed is ideal from the sense of slowing down uh, vehicles entering the square. Um, if we were to look at some other locations, they would probably be further into the historic district, further towards downtown. Um, but we are we are looking at all of those options uh, to make sure that that we've got everything optimally located. Okay. Excellent. Well, thank you, Jr. Um, and thank you to uh, Sergeant Kilroy and the Traffic Committee as well. Um, you all reacted to our concern about speed and safety in downtown uh, with a with a quick solution, and we certainly appreciate that. Um, but we will hear feedback and and continue to evaluate and assess over the next week and probably several weeks. Um, did. Do you want to present anything else? No, I don't think okay. so. Thank All right, you. Joe, do you want questions or comments? Um, so I I think the focus of the meeting, really, I'd like to be hearing from the folks who've showed up. So I'm going to try to be brief. Um, but first, Jay, I just thank you for your work, your efforts. Um, safety is definitely a priority. And there's no one sitting at this table that thinks that we should be compromising safety. Uh, the question really is the best way to do it, um, whether or not we've identified uh, the appropriate methods and whether or not those methods ha are being implemented at appropriate locations. Um, so uh, to the extent that we hear and we've already heard from residents stressing the importance of safety, uh, I don't think that's in dispute. Uh, it's really uh, what's, what are the appropriate methods and uh, where, where are the appropriate locations. Um, I wanted to pick up on what you said about the placement of the sign on North Street. Um, I'm familiar with it. That sign is across the street from a building that I have on North Street. Um, and so I, I've seen it implemented. Um, I am not, well, I guess I, I, I heard your, your explanation that you wanted, am I correct, that you wanted vehicles to be able to basically be accelerating and then they're their speed would register on the sign. Is that the essence of, of the placement? We want, to, we want to catch them where they've had an opportunity, sufficient opportunity to accelerate and reach what would generally be a safe speed. Um, we, if we put it too close, it's not actually giving feedback because they aren't um, responding to any type of stimuli that caps their activity. Yep. So I, I'll just suggest for you that you look at some other studies, because um, I did a quick look. The Virginia Department of Transportation, their direction is to place these signs at the beginning of the street section identified for traffic calming uh, in order to reinforce the posted speed limit for vehicles entering the, st uh, entering the section of street designated for traffic calming. So there are at least others who say do it at the beginning, not after people may have accelerated. Uh, so I just hope that you look at um, other considerations in terms of the placement of, of those signs. Um, sure. The, um, in terms of options other than signs, um, what have you looked at? And I'll, I'll just ask about s some specific things. Um, there are non-intrusive signs, um, like pavement markings, um, ways of narrowing streets, for example, um, pave marking bike lanes so that it's a narrower uh, passage. Um, there are vertical, uh, horizontal, and narrowing devices like speed humps, speed lumps, speed tables, raised intersections, things like that. Have you looked at those and determined that the signs are the way to go? So we are, we were willing to consider some of these additional um, uh, traffic calming elements. Um, when North Street was reconfigured a, a little over a decade ago, a lot of the um, lane striping elements uh, were considered at that time, but due to the 
relative narrow configuration of the roadway, along with the desire to maintain um, uh, parallel parking spaces, uh, especially for uh, through the commercial district, um, it, it you're you are very much constrained with. Uh, attempting to redistribute that space. Um, for example, uh, we couldn't really put in any type of a bike lane uh, through, the, through this space where you wouldn't have uh, vehicle doors routinely um, interrupting. There's, there would be no free form of travel for that. Um, where we do have the, uh, the section width, to make those changes, we're actively looking at that as well. There's a section of North Street um, just west of uh, Fountain Square where we will be restriping the center line and adding a very wide shoulder on a piece of that. Uh, and part of that is in preparation for uh, our intention to construct a sidewalk along the north side of that street where it doesn't currently exist. So um, there, are, uh, there are additional elements that are always in play. Uh, things like the speed tables, um, they may find a place through the corridor. Um, we, those are a little bit more complicated from an engineering perspective, just to make sure that we make that operationally it works for our plow drivers and uh, that, that all of the grades work so that we are able to uh, either maintain or improve upon existing ADA compliance as well as um, make sure that all the drainage works around these facilities. Uh, when you change grade like that, you can cut off uh, drainage from where it was intended to go or where it was originally intended to go. So as we evaluate um, the effectiveness of what we have already done, and if we determine that more needs to be done, then absolutely we'll continue to look at uh, what those, what those uh, steps are. Yep, I mean, as you are looking, um, I have been advocating uh, for improved bicycle safety and to the extent yep. that the roads can be configured, striped, or in any way improved to uh, increase the safety for bikers, that would be very much appreciated. Um, to what extent did you consider historic aspects of, uh, of the locations when you were placing signs? Um, in terms of the locations, we were focused on putting them in the right location from a public safety perspective. But we were not um, specifically considering uh, any historic implications in the, in the sense of the actual location of the sun. So often um, there is more than one location that serves public safety. Um, and so to the extent that there are, there's more than one location, it would be helpful if other factors were considered, uh, specifically uh, historic issues. Is that something that uh, you can you can consider? Uh, yeah, it, I, it is something that we can consider. It's um, it is a yes. We'll, we'll consider it. Great. Um, nothing else at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Great, thank you. Um, I know I know we have Sergeant Kilroy on the line. Sergeant Kilroy is is the traffic sergeant. Uh, so I'm curious, can you, I, I, my understanding that you went out there um, and made some observations over the weekend, I believe you had your radar gun with you. Can you speak to any observations that you made and the effectiveness of what we put in place, or what has been put in place in the downtown corridor? Uh, yes, sir, thank you. Um, since, since the 12th, uh, we basically have, uh, but some more directed patrols downtown, if you would. Um, our traffic officers uh, conducted approximately 12 um, directed, focused, focused enforcements downtown. Um, 
during those 12 uh, different uh, time slots, just very randomly selected, um, they have reported that everything has uh, seemed to be uh, well, well within or under the speed limits. Um, I know they've only issued, I think, two written warnings out of those 12. Uh, like JR had mentioned, one of them was on Main Street, approaching Elm Street. Um, and actually, I believe they were both in that location. Um, I was down there on Sunday, and again, um, just observing traffic, and I uh, did have the opportunity to run some radar, and everybody was well within compliance. As I looked through all the assignments for my officers, the majority of uh, all the comment sections say all speeds were well under 25, average speed 26, uh, no violations observed, average speed 20. Um, so it appears as though um, these signs have made a, a quite the improvement in just a short amount of time. Sergeant Kerroy, thank you. Thank you very much. And JR, thank you for your work. I want to begin by thanking uh, JR for uh, his efforts. I want to uh, thank, obviously, Sergeant Kerroy, Chief Jones. I uh, want to thank Andrea Young, who's been involved with the process. I've had several conversations with her. Also, Michelle Art and Tom. I also want to thank Ashley Thomas from the Hingham Police Department. Um, she's been very helpful to me in researching this issue over the past week. I do want to note that um, a couple of things. I agree with Joe. I think we, we should continue to look at the process here. We're going to do so over the next week before we think we make a final decision. Uh, I am very much in favor of looking at uh, the placement of the signs and whether or not we can do that better. Uh, we'll, know, we'll take a hard look at the one on North Street. Uh, we had some, you know, a complaint about that. I don't love the fact that the sign in front of Old Ship Church um, I like this. I like the fact that it's one on Main Street, but I think maybe we should um, look at maybe getting a better position for that sign as well. Um, I also think we should look at continue to look at the style and sub the style uh, and size of the signs. Andrea Young has uh, been very helpful to me, and I think to the entire board on offering some alternatives that are used in other uh, historic uh, downtowns, which I think we should probably have a conversation about at some point to see if we want to improve um, how they look. But I do want to remind people why we're having this conversation this evening. Um, I have a picture here. I can't show it to everybody. But it's a picture of a Toyota Tacoma pickup truck that crashed into the front of Square Cafe. All right? That's exhibit one. I have a picture of a white Jeep that a motor vehicle crashed that rolled over in front of the old ordinary on September 5th, 2017. Two days later, there was a, a post on a um, very popular social media, media site and sound. Two days later, after this motor vehicle crash, a resident said she was just almost run down at a crosswalk in the middle of downtown. Exhibit three is a picture of another uh, pickup truck that was driven into the fruit center not many years ago. In addition to the exhibits I'm going to offer into the record today, I also want to note that um, a motor vehicle has driven into the Samuel Lincoln House. This is owned by Frank and Nancy Mellon on North Street. Not once, but twice. There's been pre I have, have a picture of the crash at Square Cafe. It's my understanding that that has happened on multiple occasions as well. We got a letter the, this afternoon from the owner of Zona Hair Salon, downtown Hingham. He uh, informed us that there's been two motor vehicle crashes into his store in the downtown area. I personally saw, about two or three years ago, a vehicle traveling eastbound on North Street cross the median and literally drive into the stone wall located at 53 in North Street. And tragically, as we all know, there was a fatal accident at the corner of Beale Street and North Street just last month. You know, folks, motor vehicles driving into buildings on a regular basis is not normal. And um, I'm, I know we're going to continue to talk about how we're going to address this problem, but I do think this board, it's time for this board to take some action and to address the problem. You know, there was one comment last week, well, the police department should just park a cruiser downtown, issue more citations. In the past 10 years, the police department has issued 10,000 
10,000 citations in the downtown corridor. Uh, I asked Chief Jones, the leadership of the department, Sergeant Kilroy, even had a conversation with Chief Pirano many years ago about you know, why can't we park a cruiser downtown? It would certainly slow people down. The response I got was, the day shift is so busy responding to motor vehicle accidents in other parts of town that we can't, we can't keep one there for more than an hour or so. Also, there's just so much going on to, to dedicate that resource down there. Um, but again, 10,000 citations in 10 years is, it shows me that the police department is trying to take efforts to do that. So again, I am gonna look uh, over the next week. I wanna hear from everybody here tonight. Thank you all for coming. Um, so obviously, I will search for a potential compromise and see, if, again, if we can look at the location of the current size signs and make things better for people. Um, also, the style of the signs. But I think as my colleague said, and I agree with him, don't intend to compromise public safety. So with that, I would yield to the chair. Excellent, thank you, Bill. Okay, I will open it up for public comment, and we'll try to we'll try to stay on track here. <laughs> um, I'll first have people in the room, and then we'll go to Zoom. So if you'd like to speak, go ahead, Mark. If you and if you don't mind coming up to the podium and just stating your name and address for the record, um, this way people here and on Zoom can hear you. Thank you, um, Mark Bonagario, Ten Cliff Road. Um, I appreciate, first of all, the work that the traffic committee has done um, over a few years. Just a little background, a few years back when a child got hit in a crosswalk near Plymouth River, another resident in town formed a page on Facebook um, that I got actively involved in and the traffic committee, we reached out to them. They were incredibly responsive and we heard from dozens and maybe even 100 people voicing their concerns about safety in town, and it's not just downtown, it is everywhere. Um, other social media pages now have continual comments. Some just, I think, a week ago about a woman who said that she almost got hit in a crosswalk. Another woman responded and said that she actually had been hit in the crosswalk downtown. This isn't an uncommon occurrence. It's happening way too often. I think if anybody drives around town, you see it, and hearing people as they're on traffic committee calls, um, they're upset, and they're more upset about their kids' safety and maybe even their parents' safety than anything else. Um, I appreciate the fact that, hey, maybe there's a different location for some of these signs, you know, based on what the traffic committee finds scientifically to be the right spot. My concern is that it's a historic district. Every building you're going to put in front of is probably going to be historic, so it's tough to find the compromise as to who wants that, but it's needed here in the town. And I think you're going to need that, as you heard from, you mentioned about Sergeant Kilroy, there's a need to have greater police presence. And if it means we have to have overtime or officers and we have to pay for it, I'm in favor of doing it. So I would just yeah. urge the board to say, um, please keep the signs, find the right location, find the right traffic calming measures, but wholly in support of this because I think we need to put people before places. Um, I think that needs to be our first priority of the people of the town. Thank you. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Go ahead. So Michelle, are you keeping track of, is Heidi able to keep track of who's kind of raising their hand? Um, Proud of who? She's not here. Uh, how many? Not here. How many? Um, I'll try to, but okay. she's not in the room. I know. She's, yeah. okay. Good evening. Joe Phelan, 506 Main Street. Um, I think the chair made it uh, clear at the beginning of the meeting that I don't think there's anybody in the room who uh, disputes the decision made to reduce the speed limit. And with Mr. Ramsey's conclusion that that's needed to keep us safe in the downtown area. As Mr. Fisher pointed out, I think the issue is how this came about with no input from all of the various interested parties. Um, Various commissions and citizens groups in this town <clears throat> work very hard to maintain the look, the nature, the feel of the town. Uh, I, for one, live a mile up from my house on Main Street. I, I work a mile up and I take a left out of my driveway, but I take a right two or three times a week to go down, go around the harbor, go by Stars, come up North Street, come back up Main Street, just to remind myself how lucky we are to live here. And, we're in, and the way it's been maintained is with the input of all the citizens of the town. And uh, I think we're not disputing that where these signs were placed would slow people down. 
that's the kind of information we're getting since the last meeting when these when this uh, um, the experts were hired to help us out yes you put a sign it's going to slow people down where it is the question is what where to put those signs if those are the best measures to take are those the best measures to take are there alternative measures to take and what would this when the decisions were made what were they based on we're, we're hearing the explanation now that they're already there and the effects that they're having now that they're already there but the issue is who made the decision to put it right there and what was that based on and were these other considerations made and apparently based on the questions that mr fisher uh, asked they weren't taken into consideration only public safety and again the, wherever you put the sign it's going to slow people down so any observations that we make now uh, really don't address why other considerations weren't made. Were there other alternatives that are just as good for location, for type of mitigation? And what we're hearing is no, it, it wasn't. So I would, I would urge uh, the board to look at it further, open it, the process back up so there can be some public input and that we can have all the considerations uh, weighed before final decisions are made. Madam Chair, if I can just, uh, I, I'm not sure that I said that there was not public input um, or that there was not adequate public input. Uh, my view is that we need to have the members here, people here providing input. Um, so hopefully I, I was not uh, misconstrued. Um, there was a lot of public input. Um, and quite frankly, this, is, this, is, this process has been going on for a while. This board, uh, along for example with the zoning board, when we were looking at opening up restaurants during, um, during the heat of, um, the peak of COVID to make sure that the restaurant survived, we, need, we all looked at traffic safety, making sure that there was proper protection for those people who were seated outside, making sure there were ballasts. So this board has looked and has received public input for years in terms of the importance of public safety and making sure that actions are taken. Uh, and I believe that the, the procedures that have gone so far, that have happened so far, uh, are necessary. Um, and I think we need to make sure that we continue to improve. So to the extent that signs need to be relocated, reconfigured, or perhaps options considered, that needs to go forward. But that is not a reflection of the fact that there's not been public input and that we've not taken seriously the comments that members of the public have, uh, have provided up to now. Yes, thank you. And in addition to the public comments, I just want to say that it, it was based on an engineering study and public safety uh, from a public safety perspective. Um, it was a quick interim solution that was, you know, an answer to uh, the issue that we saw. But, uh, you know, tonight we are taking a step back to consider what other options are there, um, considering the residents, the businesses, as well as historic. Do you, can you make, can you, do you, do you want to sit here? Is that easier? You can sit right you, there. You can sit right yeah, here sit at the table oh, right. if it's easier. Yeah, you, you just need to be at a microphone. <laughs> so I'm uh, Debbie Hardy and I live at Terry Granahan's house on 25 North Street. Um, I've lived there for 20 years and I think from the time that I moved in, I've been complaining to the police, the traffic police. We sit out every morning and it's like a speedway primarily on the other side, coming down into the rotary. The average speed is 40 to 45, sometimes high, way higher than that. I first wanna ask, what happened to the signs that said 15 in each direction, right by stars, and on the other end by Talbots, from the time I moved there to just recently, possibly like a couple of weeks ago, were 15 mile an hour signs. And three years ago, when we had, um, COVID and it was, we did a Zoom meeting and we were promised all these walkways. Um, I asked about, you know, well, it says 15, so now it's 25. They said, oh no, that's just suggested speed limit. Suggested. Okay, so when we, we went from 15 to 25 and I watched 
every day how I, I don't understand how anybody's not been killed going from Cafe Tosca's to Tosca's. You know, everybody that comes to my house has to park on North Street. Uh, on the They can't even get out of their car. I'm on crutches. I've been on crutches the last 10 years. I, I could never go across my street, ever. When they're coming around that corner, well, cars have gotten hit. When they come around that corner, they're going way higher than 45. It's crazy. So first, they should have put it on the other side because that, and in the morning at 8 o'clock or before that, when all the trucks are coming in for the food, and the alcohol for all the restaurants, then the cars just speed around them because they're in a hurry to get to work. My last meeting I came to, or was on uh, the Zoom, I just gave up because they, they promised there was gonna be two lit walkways by Hennessy's and then one down by Cafe Tostas and Tosca's. That was three years ago. <laughs> It's, it's the scariest thing going outside my, I will never cross the street. I can't cross the street. And I've lived there for 20 years. I, I think people don't even think that anybody lives down that end. You know, we're the last house, but people live down there. I'm, you know, a lot of people, it's, it's gotten so busy. And it's great, and the restaurants are doing great. It's all good, but we we have to put some kind of. I, I even um, at that time suggested just not that high up um, elevated walkways like they have in, in Newport on Broadway. They have probably eight of them going down. The first one's a little bit higher, but the other one, and everybody stops, and everybody stops to look if somebody's going to walk across. It's not an eyesore. They're only up about this much, but it's a walk way and they're beautiful and it's a, a huge difference in the traffic and and my biggest complaint is it's never been monitored like I've gone to the police station I've emailed them over and over and over I've gone and sat with the traffic department I never see anybody down they should give me a gun <laughs> and I could I would get them so much money every morning we oh my need god it. we need it so, <laughs> I just I just feel like okay the signs are great but it, it, they didn't take into account anything. And I just really gave up three years ago because those walkways were promised. They, they went everywhere else. And I am, know it's important by the schools. But somebody's going to get killed. I know it. I know it. And the worst walkway is between Cafe T and it's Everybody's walking across there, whether it's the restaurant people or people out. You know, it's... It's just really scary. And so we went from 15 to 25, that's okay, <laughs> you know, but um, I just think police presence, it hasn't been there. And so what they did was just kind of a bra. I, one even moved in across the street. I don't know if he's there anymore, but he assured me, you know, he'd have his car parked out front and that would help, but I don't think he's there anymore. But I've never seen anybody like, taken a parking spot across and and really monitored the speed. So 45 is the average. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Claire. Um, Clark Frazier, 50 Bonnie Briar Circle. A couple of things, because I'm a bit of a ringer. I was on the traffic committee. That's how I first met Bill Ramsey for three years, and we were discussing this then. Is this turned on? Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, I went out today, because I come down just about every day from my house to the post office and quite often have to cross. That crosswalk is really unsafe. Uh, the latest episode was I stepped off by Hennessy behind, I was behind an SUV and a bicycle almost ran over my feet. Uh, the bicyclists are paying zero attention to traffic rules. So despite we have traffic safety, they're making it less safe. But I could go intersection by intersection. There's a problem by stars. I think the crosswalk is in the wrong place. Uh, it should be on the other side where you can see it because people get off the bus and you can't see them. The crosswalk in front of Hennessy's, I don't believe, can be safe even if it has a flashing unless uh, Main Street has a four-way stop. And the reason we looked at a four-way stop and it didn't, they talked about safety. I'm not worried about safety. What a four-way stop would do was it slow down the speed of the cars for the mid-block crosswalk. 
and, and I don't can't think of any other thing that could do it. Um, I walked around and I looked at the speed limit signs, a couple of them, I walked all the way down to uh, and around the block and came back and I had not even noticed the one coming eastbound on North Street and I've driven by it multiple times. Now, I think the traffic committee is too timid. Uh, they're overloaded with town employees. There are not enough uh, uh, citizens on it. The, the 25 mile area ought to be much larger than it is because in order to make that variable speed sign work, you could put it somewhere else, you need a 25 mile an hour limit right at the traffic light. And that 25 mile an hour limit should extend until far enough down North Street to you're past all the curves. Same thing on South Street. You can't get out of forget me not lane right now because of the curves. So that should be within 25 mile an hour zone and all of the hill behind it and a lot of the back streets. So I think right now the proposal is too timid. Uh, the sign, I took a picture of it today, didn't say anything about speed limit because in, in truth, the speed limit there is 30. And if the speed limit doesn't start until the intersection with Station Street, that's too far into the square. Uh, and if you move the speed limit out so you can have a fixed sign right at the corner at the various places remote from the square, then you can put the variable speed signs where you want, uh, where they'd be the most effective. Right now, uh, people barely can get up to 25 miles an hour. So when I walked out today and looked at the one on the other side, I saw, saw about 10 cars go through and only one was going below 25. All the others were going faster. The other last thing I'll say, there's, I could go on for half an hour about this, but, <laughs> but uh, and was the fact that early in the day, if I come down in the post office at eight o'clock before the store is open, people come barreling through at 35 and 40 miles an hour, and I don't know why we're not capturing this. And sometimes, if you look at the old, I, I saw a report, if you look at the outlier, somebody goes through there 50 or 60 miles an hour, and say, where are the police, or what can we do about it? So I think it's, it's a problem that could be helped, but I, I think right now, I haven't seen any of the statutory 17C uh, signs yet, the, the, the yellow and white ones that are called for in the legislation. I'd like to see one of those right by stars. I'd like to see either the bus stop moved a little bit or the crosswalk moved away from the bus stop and then we just keep going. The last thing I'll say is I'd like to see the spaces parking space is striped so that if there's any half a space, that half a space is right by the crosswalk in the traffic direction to move so you, you're not always having to step out from behind an SUV. No, thank you. Oh, also, I just want to say one other thing. Right, uh, we'll try not to up, dig pardon. any more holes in, in North Street in my current job as a sewer commission. Okay. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Go ahead. Thanks, and then I, I have my eye on you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Rebecca Sharp, I'm at 35 High Street in Hingham, and believe it or not, I've lived in this town for almost half a century. Um, having said that, uh, I think I'd like to follow suit and kind of go intersection by intersection, but just preface this by saying I am coming to this late. I found out about this meeting um, maybe a week's time ago, and I don't already know what's been discussed, so I apologize ahead of time if this is like way old news. Um, but if we were to take this intersection by intersection, and I'm gonna preface this by saying, have stop signs have really been talked about? Because I think we all agree in this room that speed is the overall issue. And if speed is the overall issue, how do you really slow down a car? You get it to come to a complete stop, and then has to start again. And depending on how much leg room it has till it gets to its next stop, it really can't go that fast. I mean, in theory. So having said that, um, if you can follow with me, and I'll, I'll keep this brief, but intersection through intersection, if you're up at Old Ship and you're coming down Main Street, heading into the downtown area, there's Elm Street. If we were to put, I know it's an arbitrary spot for a stop sign, but if there was a stop sign in front of, on Main Street, in front of Old Ship, where Elm Street is, even though it's not technically needed, that is going to slow down the traffic heading into the downtown area. I'll take it from the outskirts. Central Street is already loaded with stop signs, so I don't need to address that. 
Coming from CVS, I agree that corner coming around South Street, it's a pretty wicked corner and they're pretty fast. But once they get in front of stop in front of CVS and the community center, there is a stop sign. So those areas coming down other than the Main Street, Elm Street one that I suggested, coming into town that way, you're pretty well slowed down. Coming from North Street, so let's say the Lincoln Corridor, or North Street from, um, I guess that would be Beale Street, one of those two directions. You're stopped when you hit Lincoln, if you have come down Lincoln, when you enter North Street. But you can come all the way from Hersey down Lincoln at a pretty good speed. So at that intersection, hopefully you're all following, where we've got Talbot's, St. Paul's, the Square Cafe, there are a lot of out-of-town drivers who almost expect it to be a three-way stop and hesitate and don't quite understand why it's not a three-way stop. And people who live in town get furious. They lay on their horns because it's not, and they're like, just keep going. But it's almost like it doesn't make sense to keep going. It, it feels like I want to stop. We should be stopping and giving you know right of way to people as they enter the intersection in the proper order. So having said that, why is that not a stop sign? Um, in front of St. Paul's, directly across from the Square Cafe, hopefully you can follow me, and then in front of Talbot's, again, across from like the parking lot, kitty corner from North Street Church and St. Paul's, make, making it like a three-way stop. And then as you leave the area, um, we already made the, that um, road a one-way, which I, I apologize, Buttonwood Books was there. I can't think of the name of it. Anybody? That's already been made a one-way, yeah. so you can only come up that. And then the other place I would add a stop is at the top of Station Street. So when you're coming on North Street, because there's already at a stop at the, at the top of North. So again, the idea is you're coming off of 3A, you're stopping at the top of, of Station Street. You're going as far as um, St. Paul's, you're stopping again. And then you're either going to take a left and go up Central, or you're gonna take a right and either go down Lincoln or continue on North. I mean, that is what's gonna slow traffic. So I would say it's like four or five different stop signs. Stop sign to me is not intrusive to the historic value of the town. It doesn't affect anything. And I think it's really the only way to get people to slow down and stop. Excellent. Thank you. That's all I got. Go ahead. Uh, good evening. I'm Trish Magalier, and I'm at 14 um, Park Circle. And I'm here on behalf of um, Old Ship Church. Um, and I just want to thank. Uh, thank the select people and the town for um, taking on this issue. Um, I can say as a resident for over 20 years, it definitely is something that we need to, um, to contend with. Um, our concerns particularly are about the placement of the sign in front of Old Ship Church, which the select people have already, um, uh, Mr. Fisher and Mr. Ramsey have already spoken about, um, particularly the the consideration of the historic nature of the um, of the play, you know the area in particular of Old Ship Church, so that sign is one of the um, the flashing, you know, mm -hmm. record your Back. speed and whatnot. Um, it's big. Um, unfortunately, where it is placed currently is. Um, marring, I believe, and several of us believe, the streetscape that if you are on the street looking up the hill at Old Ship, it's directly in your view. Mm -hmm. So it's like we would have to actually change the town seal now to put a little, <laughs> a little sign right there almost. Um, anyway, we would just appreciate um, if you would reconsider the position of that particular sign. Um, just, you know, thinking about just going a little further up or a little further down Main Street, just so it would not, um, we don't mar the streetscape. So thank you. Thank you. The gentleman in the back. Good evening, Mark Lachlan, 207 North Street. I wanna thank the committee um, because 
27 North Street, but I'm also a very avid walker. I walk all over town all the time. Mm -hmm. And the behavior of the drivers in town is horrendous. Mm -hmm. Number of people who don't stop at crosswalks uh, is just scary. Mm -hmm. I saw an incident where I was stopped waiting for a young woman to, to a jogger at where Beale, West, and North meet. Five cars didn't stop, then a car passed me. <clears throat> and almost hit her. <clears throat> but so anything that we can do to slow down traffic. But here's a concern. I live in North Street, seen crosswalks. Bus, school buses don't stop for school buses, for me in the crosswalk. On Sunday morning at 7.30, I'm walking up to tennis, a police car coming through, 33, 35 by the time it goes by the speed limit. So I would ask the town and so also town vehicles not stopping at, at crosswalks. Please instruct police cars to adhere to the traffic, the speed limit, because if the police aren't doing it, how do you expect the general public to do it? A school bus, that's, that, that's a very popular route for school buses, 35, 37 going into town at that, that uh, the one right there in front of my house. So please, please instruct the school bus drivers, the police car drivers, and they, it's not with the light going, they're just cruising, and they're going to the mid thirties. So I would ask the town to please instruct the town officials, the town trucks, buses, everything to adhere. And also to make an effort to stop for people in crosswalks. Yes, thank you. Yeah. All right, who am I missing? Do you want to come up, Terry? Hi, Terry Granahan, um, 7 Cottage Street, but I also, also own uh, 25 North Street. And I um, want to thank the select board here. Um, I've been talking to Bill Ramsey for years about the speed on North Street and, uh, and uh, to Joe, and I uh, think that it's a great that we, we address the issue because people go too fast. Um, my, own, my issue is with the, and I made a sketch here to hand to the selectman, uh, select board rather, and uh, if anyone else wants to see it as well, um, the historic, um, the historic building at 25 North Street, the sign is very hideous and unattractive. I know that's <laughs> superficial, but however, it, um, it, how many, it, it, I'd ask anyone, would you like that sign in front of your house? And the answer would probably be no. Right, exactly, right. So I think a, a better solution, and I think the select board is, you know, um, and someone else mentioned putting it a sign near STARS. And there's a crosswalk right at STARS. Whether that's the right location or not, I'm not sure, but you could have a sign there that's 25 miles an hour, and also because when they get to 25 North Street, you have to, you have to step it on the gas even to get to 25 there. And um, I I think that uh, you could put a sign there, you know, prior to the crosswalks. You can see the crosswalks right here at Stars and Cottage Street, and going across. It would slow people down because that's really a concern: the pedestrians crossing at Stars, um, across. They go from Cafe Tosca to Tosca, and you could actually have instead of the speed limit sign, um, you could have an arrow pointing the sidewalk with the speed limit sign. It was, I think, it would slow people down dramatically. And the other practical issue is at night, this sign. Uh, even at zero speeds, is flashing off of the white building at Cafe Tosca, the office building, and it's flashing into the property at 25 North Street and 23 North Street into the bedrooms. And it's just, I've had complaints from the tenants there, and I just, you know, respectfully request the town to consider a new location there that I think that would be better. And just one last thing, I think putting things in the middle of the road, like they have at the post office, really slows down traffic. And I know those get moved around a lot, but, you know, if the, if that you consider something like that, even halfway down North Street, and I've also suggested putting brick brick across in some some areas, and I, I know somebody would actually pay for one of those with, with curbing on each side, and then brick there with it, and you know slow it down. Maybe two locations, maybe at the corner of North Street, and maybe one near Cafe Tosca, and I think that would be a great solution. But you get that ripple effect when you drive over it. So that's all I'm going to say, and uh, thank you for your consideration, and, and I appreciate the select board for you know hearing all of the different and reasons and um, and the historic nature of the keeping the historic nature of, of Hingham um, at, at the highest level and the, the street streetscape as well thank yes, you so much thank you. thank you all right who did I miss go ahead come on Frank 
I am uh, Frank Mellon, 182 North Street. We are the Samuel Lincoln Cottage that was hit uh, two years ago uh, in July, uh, which took out, as many of you know, 18 feet of wall, destroyed most of the left half of the downstairs and took about a year for us to put back together. So I will try to keep my emotions in check when I talk about this. But uh, again, I, I really wanted to say two, th uh, three things. One, thank you for some of the options that you folks have put out to us tonight. I didn't really know how many of those options you might really be considering. Uh, we've talked after our accident uh, to the, uh, the poor traffic committee, several of whom are up there and they're probably all rolling their eyes as we went through uh, a number of meetings to talk about bike lanes. We certainly support bike lanes. Uh, there are some places that uh, need uh, no parking stripes. We support that. We've talked a little bit about uh, raised uh, sidewalks, et cetera, that some other folks here mentioned. I think the point is we're really, really pro any and all options that you folks uh, want to uh, come up with. Um, we, our house has been uh, almost hit three other times. We've had five instances over 30 plus years where folks have rolled right in front of our house two times, the most recent two years ago when our house was actually hit. So we uh, know the, the danger, the, the downtown area, uh, this sidewalk situation downtown, many folks have mentioned it. I won't get into all the details, but I don't know how many times I've taken my life in my hands trying to cross from the post office to Hennessy's or vice versa, or in front of the Square Cafe. Um, lastly, two quick things, the, um, the new flashers. We love, love the flasher on our street, North Street by our house. We're ecstatic about that. I don't know, we don't know uh, as far as the placement of these, as some folks have said, uh, the placement, maybe there's a better place, maybe there's a different design for those. It's more historically accurate. But my point is, while we're, you're all going through that exercise, please, please leave the signs that are there in place. They're up, maybe they're not in the right spot, maybe there's a better spot for them, but it's sadly, it's not 1880 in downtown Hingham anymore. Uh, we don't have 10 mile an hour horse and buggies going down the street. Folks frequently don't um, pay attention to those signs. The, the uh, flasher signs are a great first step. I do believe they slow traffic, but uh, say in our area, um, if uh, folks, police or otherwise, want to do reviews downtown, say on a Friday night coming out of the square, or Monday through Friday in the morning going into the square, six or seven people blowing through there well over 26.8 miles an hour. And uh, I would uh, suggest that we just keep all the options open. We would love to help with any of those. So, Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Deirdre. Thank you, Select Board. Good evening. I'm Deirdre Anderson, 31 Old Colony Road, but I'm speaking this evening as the Executive Director of the Hingham Historical Society, stewarding properties at 34 Main Street, the Hingham Heritage Museum, 21 Lincoln Street, the Old Ordinary, and 181 North Street, the National Historic Landmark, Benjamin Lincoln House. Uh, let me preface by saying I'm extremely sensitive to the idea of these signs in a historic district, uh, but I also think we need to follow the lead of the professional traffic engineers. Uh, the traffic committee took amazing leadership on a downtown business safety zone. Having been intimately familiar with other traffic calming measures in town, namely the 3A project and the road diet, it was amazing to see the initiative the town took through the traffic committee. Sorry Sergeant Kilroy, J.R. Fry, when the Mellons house was hit by a car at 182 North Street. The Hingham Historical Society experience over the last three years in leading tours and field trips gives us a unique perspective on the traffic problems in Hingham Square and the need for remediation. Our two newest employees commented in their first weeks of work how crazy people drive around here. Speed, disregard for crosswalks, and distracted drivers all contribute to a dangerous environment requiring vigilance. As you are all aware, a distracted driver drove into the historic Samuel Lincoln Cottage, car flipped in front of the 
the old ordinary on Labor Day weekend. Square Cafe has been hit many times. Zona has been hit. Many of you have seen the Hingham Historical Society's new history cart, which we launched this summer. Our low speed, street legal, 25 mile per hour vehicle is an accessible way for residents and visitors to enjoy our tours of historic Hingham. Last month, we pulled out of the old ship meeting house driveway after showing folks the bell tower, turned right onto Main Street heading north, and a driver sped past us on the right. On the right. right. So someone exiting their car, accessing the bank or the movie theater could have gotten hit. As we prepare to open the Benjamin Lincoln House, which this town has a three quarters of a million dollar investment in as a museum and welcome increased tourism as the world commemorates the 250th anniversary of the American Revolution and America's 250th birthday, this town will benefit from traffic calming in Hingham Square. Let's take a deep breath and perhaps we can consider these things until the behavior change as perhaps temporary measures, but we have to change the behavior because I think in time what might be visibly offensive tonight and this period as it get, you get used to it, it will help what I hope our community's highest priority is, which is keeping our neighbors and visitors safe. Thank you. Thank you. Lynn? Hi, everyone. I'll be brief because a lot of comments have already been made. Um, but I'm Can Lynn Barclay. Can you state your name and address? What? You. Just name and address, please. <laughs> Lynn Barclay, uh, 11 Cottage Street. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of the Hingham Downtown Association and the businesses. Um, I first want to say thank you to the Traffic Committee Select Board and all that were involved in advancing the new speed limit in the downtown business district. Safety is our first and foremost number one concern for the downtown community. This topic is discussed at every single one of our meetings. We have experienced everything from speeding downtown to people rolling through four-way stop sign intersections, a couple close misses of people getting hit, one of which was someone that I knew a couple weeks ago that was previously referenced, two separate instances to cars striking Cafe Tosca that Mr. Ramsey referenced, and also two cars striking Zona. We bring to your attention, we believe, it's not a matter of if, but it's a matter of when that this will happen again. So it's for these reasons that we support the new speeding zone and the signage that's been installed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Did I miss anybody in the room? Gentleman in the back, guys. Sorry, oh, I can't see. Sorry, did you want to speak? I saw your hand go up. I, was, uh, I think that was in support. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wrote it down. <laughs> it was an emphasis. Okay. <laughs> Any uh, members of the public online that would like to make a comment? I can't see anyone. Can you, Art? No. Okay. Maybe encourage people to wave or use the... No. Okay. If there are people on Zoom that would like to speak, if you can raise your hand either physically or uh, digitally, we'll give people a, a, a minute to register if you want to make a comment. There's one. Sarah Abbott. Hi, uh, this is Sarah Abbott. I live at 126 Main Street. And um, just a couple of comments on I go with some of the other folks said. But curious to know if there's any data collected on the cars that come down Lower Main Street in the evenings and overnight. Um, because I can hear them speeding. And while some people have slowed down during the day, nothing happens. Like I, I watch cars between 5 a.m. until you know 9, 10 o'clock at night when I'm back home, with the light blowing up in red, consistently going over 25 miles an hour, and nothing is done about it. So I mean, while people will see it, I don't see a whole lot of actions changing. And I and I just want to know what the, the data says for the evenings, because I didn't hear that mentioned earlier. Um, and I, I would also just like to, to echo the thought on the uh, stop signs and pushing things back. Maybe if the sign on Lower Main Street in front of the old church is moved back by either the stop sign 
or just beyond um, St. John's, there was an accident not too long ago where someone came driving down Main Street and ran into a house um, on Lower Main, just past Water Street. Um, if the sign was further up and cars were coming down, I think it could help in two ways. One, for cars that are traveling down Water Street, but also on Lower Main. I do love that, they're, that we're taking this seriously. There are a lot of um, children up and down Main Street all day long. Uh, and plenty of times people have almost been hit, myself included, as I cross uh, over Maine. But um, I, I don't think it's preventing people from doing anything where it's currently located. It should be pushed back. Um, and I know that police presence is hard to have there, but it would be great even if it was for an hour a day so that someone gets a ticket and they can tell their friends. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Do you want to? Do you have anything you want to add? Um, just a brief comment. Um, I think, at least what I've heard this evening, um, is that inaction is not acceptable. That safety is a concern. It's a priority. Um, that it's important that we consider options. Um, I know other communities, for example, Wellesley has focused on speed tables as a way of addressing this. Um, and I just want to make sure that we do look at other options um, so that we come up with an effective program. Um, but the concern of our residents for the safety, their safety, their children's safety, visitor safety, has clearly been heard and uh, we intend to act. Thank you. Excellent. Bill? Um, just briefly, I want to thank everybody for, for their comments and their input. We've also received uh, quite a few emails on the topic as well, which has been helpful in our deliberative process here. Um, some some residents side have mentioned the need for crosswalk safety. I, we're gonna, once we figure this one out, that's going to be next. I agree with many of the comments here tonight that we need to look at crosswalks in the downtown corridor, particularly the one that connects post office to Hennessy's yeah. and some of the other areas also. But lastly, I want to point out one other thing too. Um, this conversation we're having about safety in the downtown quarter is not just going to be about downtown. It's part and parcel of a larger conversation about making our entire community safe. All right. So folks that live, don't live in downtown but have expressed uh, safety concerns certainly to me over the years, I'm sure to my colleagues, we're going to get to you as well. All right. We're going to look at intersections on High Street that are problematic, other intersections. So I want people to know that we're taking this issue seriously. We're going to continue to do it. And um, Madam Chair, are we going to put this on next week's agenda or what's the, what's the timeline so people are aware of it? Yes, thank you. So I would like to put this on next week's agenda. We will be meeting next Tuesday. Um, we wanted to take a vote on whether to remove the signs or move the signs. Um, so I am hopeful that we will have more data from J.R. Fry and the consultant that he's working with on other alternative locations. Um, my feeling at this point is is this is a good interim solution. Uh, we did commit to having a decision by the end of this month, and I would stick with that. Um, and I, so I'd like to consider for next week alternate locations for the feedback signs. Um, but I am looking at this more holistically. I want, this is not a one and done conversation. Um, we will, this is an iterative process in my mind. I do want to look at other solutions. Um, I think speed is certainly an issue, and we've heard that this evening. I think visibility is an issue. The crosswalks, the visibility for crosswalks is an issue. Traffic patterns are issues you know, related to stop signs and behavior. So I think there's, there's more to look at. And so it's not just one solution. I don't think a, one sign is the solution for this whole situation. Um, so again, I see this as an iterative process. Um, I would like to have an update on the speed data on a monthly basis so that we can continue to track that um, at all hours of the day. Um, I don't think it's limited to daytime, but certainly we want to be sure about that and um, the data that was presented this far was literally from Thursday to Monday right we've been working pretty quickly so that's not a complete data set by any any means um, so I would like to continue to evaluate that on a monthly basis as well and and adjust as as necessary um, so 
thank you all for participating. Thank you for your feedback. I know not everyone's completely satisfied with the current situation. Please be patient. This is we, what I see as an interim solution to an issue, and we will continue to work on it to get to the right solution for downtown and the entire community. Liz, I think Andrea Young's raising her hand. Oh, Andrea. Andrea Young, did you want to make a comment? Oh, yes. Um, thank you very much. I just, um, to your comment about uh, considering other locations, um, who will be involved in that? Or how will that be done? Will that be... Uh, so J JR uh, is working with the consultant, is it Van Ness? Um, as well as I'm sure he will be connecting with you, Andrea, as well as Sergeant Kilroy. Um, and we have gathered and all of the um, citizen feedback as well. Obviously, we'll have the recorded minutes from tonight, but we have compiled all of the feedback that has been sent to us via email. So that will all be part of the consideration process. Thank you. Thank you. So if, if there are other questions or comments, uh, please do email us. Uh, we are reading all of it and cataloging it um, in terms of, of the different issues and different ideas. So thank you. Thank you. Well, before, before everyone leaves, just so you know, the next item on our agenda <laughs> is cellular service in Hingham. And it's like, so we know that that's also, also a concern, so stay. <laughs> it's an exciting night. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. Thanks. Thank you. You too. Exhibit one through five. I knew it. What? <laughs> Thanks, Clark. I was going to see you, buddy. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe, I think we'll get another chance. We do, we, we do have to finish the meeting. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Very good. Maybe we can like us to put these. Probably uh, there. Maybe up there so we can maybe get them on camera. Yes. They need to sort of go next to each other, I think. Maybe. Just go it's big. Talking into the mic and then showing it there. Would like us over there? Yes. I just want to make sure it's on the camera. Yeah. It'll be a big reveal. Yeah. The big reveal. <laughs> Mark, How are you? Okay. can you move that a little bit over so we can, Mark, Mark, Sir. can you move that a little bit that way so we can, which way, this way, not towards us, just that way, that's okay, good, thank you, okay, got it. Is that good? Okay, thank you for the visuals. Um, we can provide it on the screen as Okay, excellent. So next on the agenda is cellular service improvement presentation. Uh, cellular service and the lack of it is certainly an important issue um, that the town and the select board is very concerned with um, from a public safety perspective as well as an economic development uh, perspective. Certainly we are seeing um, bad cell service across town but mainly in the downtown area and at the high school and the middle school. So you can imagine that poses a public safety um, and security issue for our children as well as an economic uh, issue for our, our downtown businesses. So we've asked um, Mark Cullings and Judy Sneath and the citizen group to come in and present their findings. Um, we are grateful for you working with us. Uh, we're thinking a little bit outside of the box here to come to some solution. Um, I will ask Art Robert, assistant town administrator, to present the status of the work that the town has been doing. And then we'll ask you to present what you're doing and what the next steps are. Terrific. Sure, thank you, and I'll, I'll do my best to uh, keep this brief. Thanks. 
my, my, my goal here is just to provide a quick overview of town efforts, which have been ongoing for some time. Uh, clearly, uh, cell service was brought, the poor quality of cell service was really brought to us by many uh, residents in the spring. But I think we've recognized poor service as, a, as an issue and have been engaging with uh, carriers and service providers for some time. And what I hope we can do here is just show, uh, provide a, a, a foundation of information, give you a sense of what our approach has been, which has really been to figure out how to uh, encourage the markets to work, the private sector service providers to provide better uh, better service to their customers. But I want to let you know that uh, along the way that we've learned some other things. And I, I think first and foremost, from our, our conversations, uh, we understand this to be substantially a Hingham problem. You know, we've talked with our counterparts in nearby communities, and we've heard some issues about cell service, but our counterparts are not, not, are not uh, learning that uh, uh, serious cell service deficiencies exist in nearby communities, Rockland, Norwell, Situate. Uh, also, you know, from an economic development perspective, recognizing that poor cell service in the square, which we have many small businesses, is an important location, uh, hasn't really bubbled up as a priority or as a, an, an issue uh, with the, uh, the, the cell shore chamber of commerce. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a communication issue, but it, it might be another indicator that the challenge that we're wrestling with is is uh, special and limited. And I think because the town isn't a, a service provider, you know, we can't have direct uh, influence or, or direct outcomes, but there are ways that we can uh, uh, encourage better service and certainly one approach is to look for ways to partner with providers through providing sites for locating infrastructure and I'll touch on that a little bit more shortly and also uh, being a, a, a predictable and trustable partner in the permitting process Hingham has a, sets high standards it affects all forms of development in, including cell infrastructure siting uh, just to set the table a little bit I uh, just wanted to point out where our, our significant infrastructure is in Hingham today based on uh, primarily on building permit data, seven locations arrayed from the shipyard in the northwest to 100 uh, Sharp Street, you know, south of, of Route 3. There's one site at 1 Lincoln Street that's not listed or, or shown here. It's permitted, but it's not an active site. And I just want to point out that in this mix of sites, there's a combination of, of structures. We have a few towers, such as at 100 uh, Sharp Street. Uh, we have uh, a couple of monopoles, which is essentially a, a cylinder pointing straight up in the air. The, the most visible example is at 266 Whiting. And from a, from a permit perspective, there are other approaches that are called host structures. For example, everybody knows the chimney at 9 Shipyard, uh, as well as a church steeple, such as at uh, 3 Elm Street. Taking an approach to uh, encouraging the, our, our private sector service providers to, to step up, uh, over time, several of us, Bill, Ramsey, Tom Mayo, and myself, have had opportunities to engage with representatives from cell service providers, the big three, AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile, as well as what I call cell infrastructure providers, such as Centerline and Crown Castle. Those kinds of companies, they don't deliver the service directly, but what they do is, in effect, create hotel space meaning they build infrastructure with the goal of attracting tenants like AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, and, and others. And for the, the, the major service providers, companies like Centerline and Crown Castle can take the first step and you know, provide spaces into which uh, you know, some of these major providers can drop into without a big upfront investment. The chart here shows a number of different uh, sites that we advanced with these cell service providers and infrastructure providers, you know, through what I would call business development conversations, reaching out to executives, uh, asking them about their goals for Hingham, expressing our interest as a community to, to engage as a, as a partner and look for win-win situations, suggesting a number of town-owned sites in areas where we understand service to be inadequate as a place to site infrastructure. 
in those conversations, I think we got a lot of interest in principle, but when looking at these town-owned sites, which range from you know the bathing beach in the northwest to uh, the central fire station in, in the library at, at 66 Levitt Street in, in the southeast, uh, we heard uh, different kinds of feedback ranging from service, their, their service is good in the given location, the proposed locations are too close to existing, uh, existing antennas or other infrastructure, or locations that we're offering. And we started by offering rooftops, not necessarily saying, hey, here's some land, tell us how big you can build something. The feedback we got was essentially we weren't uh, able to deliver enough height to, for the providers, be, the, the cell service providers or the infrastructure providers to build something that would have enough height to project uh, radio waves at, at, at distances that made sense to them. We, along, along the way, you know, we, we heard a lot of, of concern expressed, not about residents being able to talk to each other, not about businesses to, to, to talk to customers and close deals, but just the basic questions of people not feeling comfortable about their being able to, to reach uh, a first responder if there was a need. So the town did invest a fair amount of effort into drilling into this. and. Uh, that was conducted in partnership with our police department, our fire department, and our regional dispatch organization, the Shrek. On hearing those kinds of concerns expressed, uh, working with those three partners, uh, we, we invested some effort into looking at locations shown on this map here and conducting a, a, a survey of our own. And we found a few things. One, that at, at these sites, ranging from downtown to the high school, uh, to the Bear Cove Park entrance area, that all three service, all, all three major carriers could, could be found to generate service. And at those locations, uh, we could place voice calls to 911, and we could also complete text to 911 calls. So recognizing there, there's concern out there, but there, we found that there is certainly capability to, to reach 911 at a number of important sites spread across town. Another piece that we learned along the way that's important to share is that regardless of who your carrier is for your phone, if you place a 911 call, it will be picked up by the nearest cell antenna, regardless of carrier. So if you're con you may be concerned about your company service, but if you're located next near a, a, an antenna operated by another provider, it's going to pick up your 911 call and direct it. Uh, the third piece, given all of this, you know, we, we concluded in conversations with, uh, with our regional dispatch that it made sense for them to do some outreach to remind the community that even if you can't reach, but reach 911 by voice, text to 911 is a viable option. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. Yeah. <laughs> So just thinking ahead, as I said before, we had conversations with the uh, cell service providers and the infrastructure providers. Uh, I think we established a rapport. I think they understand our interest in improving service. I think they understand uh, the, the town's intent to be a, a, a trusted partner to find a path forward in ways that make sense. And what we, what we learned about potential infrastructure is summarized here on this chart. Now, some of this I think the community will, will, will know about. For example, if you look at the southwest uh, corner of this map, where there are two s small cell uh, locations, you know, that's Fort uh, Hill Road or Fort Hill Street. AT&T has two small cell uh, uh, installations in the, in the permitting process. And if you look to the northeast of this map at 30 Green Street, uh, Verizon is currently uh, in the process to permit small cell uh, antenna structures on the building they own at that address. There's a third small cell, if you look in the, the northwest corner, uh, in conversations with AT&T, we understand they have, an, they have an, an intent to drop another small cell structure. Couldn't, quite, couldn't get a, like a specific address, but they did say along 3A. And uh, it, in the center of this map, you'll see Monopole with a question mark. 
That is a site that's located at our DPW. We've been in conversations for some time with Verizon about the possibility of locating a, a monopole structure at the DT DPW site. We also think that there are other town-owned properties nearby that could also work. Uh, what I want to point out, just for awareness, if you look at the southeast uh, corner of this map, you'll see Hingham Center location with a question mark. I can tell you, and I'm sure all of you have this experience, that um, cell service here is not good. Cell service at the high school is not good. And we certainly heard from many people that in Hingham Center generally, cell service is not good. The service providers and the infrastructure uh, providers are interested in citing something in the Hingham Center area. I dropped this pin at 339 Central, which is the Central Fire Station. I'm not saying that's the location, but they would like to do something. They would like to see something in that area to, to fill gaps that I think we all recognize. So. With that, I just wanted to share what we've been working on, and I'm sure that there's a lot that we don't know. There's a lot that we can learn from uh, efforts that other folks in the community have, have been investing in. I'm certainly interested in learning more. Yes, excellent. Thank you, Art, and thank you, Bill and Tom Mayo, uh, for his efforts, too. I know that a lot of people have been working on this, and we've been talking about this for a while, so it's nice to see progress <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Um, and keep moving, so go ahead. Thank you so much, I'm Beth Rice. I live at 12 Lafayette Avenue here in town. And uh, thank you so much, it was great to hear all of that. We're super interested. We are a small band of frustrated but concerned and optimistic citizens who would love to uh, continue to learn more about the problem and the solutions, but it will come as no surprise that people in Hingham are frustrated by cell service. My, uh, I've been elected to be our spokesperson tonight, but my committee, is, for the most part, is sitting here in the front. Justin Aborn and Mark Collings, Julie Donovan, uh, Ben Lee, Bruce Robupo, um, Bill Roof, Ron Sherwood, and Judy Sneak. So I wanted to introduce all of us, and thank you very much for allowing us to be on the agenda tonight. We appreciate the chance to speak. Um, and uh, so again, you know, it is not, not a surprise that everybody nods when you say how frustrating the cell service in Hingham is. We uh, teamed up to just really try to take the first step towards learning more about it. And we're gonna tell you a little bit about that tonight, um, very briefly. Um, and we're, our objective is really maybe we can continue to learn more about it. Perhaps we can help and perhaps the community at large. I think people are very willing to try to figure out how they can help with this. We're all customers of these providers and perhaps there's something as a community that we can do together to try to m move the needle on this as well. So we're very glad to hear all of the good work that's been going on at the town level is fascinating and thank you for sharing that. Um, so what have we done so far? We also have talked with some of the provider providers, people who we knew or people who we could network with. It was interesting. We've talked to some telecommunication thought leaders, uh, as well as some local political and business leaders about the issue and the challenges, just trying to understand it a little bit. We know there's a lot we don't know. Um, and we also did something that was super interesting, and it sounds like you all have done it as well at the town level. We conducted our own little audit of the service here mm -hmm. in Hingham. Um, and Ben, if you could talk to us a little bit about that. We put it up together on a large map that shows the town, and then the call-out map is downtown specifically. Would it help to put it on the screen? We, did, we do have it, yes. I, I can do that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Art. My name is Ben Lee at 5 Ward Street. I'm so excited to have seen everything that you've done so far. Um, Art, that was a great presentation. Uh, one of the things you can see that we've done is we've conducted our own mobile uh, task force, so to speak, and we've gone around with our own devices, uh, leveraging um, a, a very specific speed test app. Uh, to go through and with all three of the major carriers find locations on uh, within Hingham that definitely need help. Some of them are just abysmal. Um, on the maps, both maps, uh, you'll see small tiny dots and then you'll also see larger icons. The larger icons are the emphasized bad areas with uh, each of the, the vendors being um, color coded to represent their, their portions. 
what we found is very, very similar to what you've already shown us, Art, um, that there are many areas within town, uh, whether it's uh, topographical problems or it's uh, you know, density of uh, vegetation or whatever the, the causes may be, there are many, many places in town where just driving through the neighborhood you might get disconnected from a call. Um, that can be very disrupting to me and it can take my focus off the street for a minute when I'm trying to figure out, can you still hear me? No, no, you can't hear me. Um, and and so not only does that make uh, you know, working within the town difficult, but I do know uh, without a question that it, that, that can distract from driving. So um, add that into the, to the mix that, as you can see in downtown, all of the carriers have places within the downtown area that where either they can't connect at all, although we didn't try 911 tests, so I'm glad you guys have validated that. Uh, but being able to send information, receive information, uh, make a call to a family member to, to validate, you know, does this color look good on me or what have you, right? These are real th real problems that affect all of us every time we're in downtown. Um, thankfully, the, the town building here has public Wi-Fi, otherwise my phone wouldn't work. Um, uh, and you know, a few uh, select people in downtown have guest Wi-Fi, making it very, very um, you know, helpful for their patrons, but everybody else is really left high and dry. And, and personally, I love this town so much but i can't share how much i love the town until i get home and i'm back on my flight <laughs> so i hope we can do something yeah. as a community <laughs> to fix that <laughs> thanks fed so you know i think we here's here's how to summarize we learn certainly that there that we have um a, a real problem here in town um and we also learned that fixing it isn't going to be easy right and um we realize that local and, and state government have very limited ability to really fix this, right? This is a provider issue, and, and we certainly heard that. Um, we learned and have learned more tonight that there are some very encouraging improvement projects underway, and, and that's great. We also learned, importantly, that the providers, and we heard this consistently, they want to deliver great service. They don't want um, unhappy customers, right? So there's a lot of goodwill on this whole problem. The town wants to fix it. The people want to fix it. Everybody we've talked to wants to fix it. The providers are very uh, emphatic that they want to deliver good service. Um, so we were in encouraged by that. Um, and, and we really just came here tonight, honestly, to introduce ourselves, to raise our hand and say, we've done a little bit of learning about this problem. We're very quick to acknowledge that we don't completely understand it. We are delighted to learn more about what's underway uh, here in town to fix it. Um, and we'd like to continue to learn more from, from all of you and from Art, and also maybe just continue to learn how we might be able to mobilize both our little co committee, and we're happy to work hard at this if it's helpful, but also the town at large through a variety of communication things that we potentially could do to mobilize and activate our town to try to get behind fixing this. So it seems like it's, uh, we ended our first phase of this in a very positive way. We really learned a lot. We met our objectives. We're very appreciative of being here tonight, um, and we hope we can continue to be part of the solution. So thank, thank you. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you, Beth, and thank you, Ben, and thank you to the entire committee for all of the, the work that you've done. Um, I think it will take all of us to be <laughs> noisy and uh, persistent with this issue. As you mentioned, um, we don't have complete control over it. We can't just make it happen, so it's extremely frustrating. Um, but I think it will take all of us, again, as you said, to, to move the needle. So we will continue um, the work on, on our end, and Art certainly is, is your direct contact. I want to make sure there's an open line of communication so we're not um, doing things kind of working against each other or even redundant. We don't want to waste your time, exactly. um, but certainly appreciate your, your expertise and your connections to help uh, move this along. And you can see together our whole group how many places we tested yes. and how, you know, and, and the app was super interesting and very informative and instructive, very easy to do. Uh, and it was a, actually, once we all got started, it was kind of fascinating. Yeah, we drove all around town and stopped and tested it. So we can, we're happy to leave these behind to as a uh, poss possibly a helpful tool to look at you know over time kind of where some of these issues really are here in Excellent. town. Excellent. So thank, thank you. you. I know there were some citizens petitions going around as well. Oh. Do we know the status of that or if that data were those results ever shared with the providers? 
Do you know Bill or Art? Uh, we forwarded it to him. We yeah. did. Yeah. Okay. I mean, okay. Yeah. Okay, absolutely. And has this sort of information already gone to the providers? This is okay. the first we've shared it okay. tonight. Okay. And this has we'll be all been done in the last. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> this is all within the last probably two to three weeks. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Bill, I know you've been working on this. Do you have any questions or, or do you want to go, Julie? Did you want to add something? Just, uh, Absolutely. I have a question. I, I, do you mind coming up here just so we can, everybody can hear? Hi, thank you. Julie Donovan, 18 Malcolm. And it's been such a pleasure working with this committee. Uh, I wish my professional life was as organized as working with this committee. Uh, all right, let me ask you, I guess, if you don't mind directing you as like a central point of contact on the town, is there anything our committee can do to help you? We meet every Monday, believe it or not, at 1030 on a, some in person, some on a Zoom call. I'm not trying to create anyone uh, like a second full-time job for anybody. Uh, we really are here in the best interest of like of the community and people heard we were coming tonight and we could have brought a crowd but we said we're not ready for that we we just we are we're truly here to say how can we help sometimes if you block and tackle like you take this work stream you take this work stream and then we all meet on some regular basis I don't know what that looks like but that's I thought I would ask so, yeah. well that's that's a big offer I certainly appreciate that I think at this point knowing that we have options to offer and we, we've talked about the possibility of just putting them out out to bid to see what kind of response we get just to kind of make it clear that the town is interested and uh, is looking for for service it's the other thing I think about just very broadly uh, you know just reflecting in my own experience as an economic developer you know the permitting process is is challenging in many communities Hingham has high standards and as projects go forward they benefit from hearing the whole the full range of community perspectives okay so it sounds like then uh, that's where community action could be supportive right in the permit process if there's enough yes uh, voice okay awesome we love action items yeah, I think it, it might be uh, worth just having an on offline conversation just about what other paths might be possible. You've had your conversations, we've had ours. And we would love that. There may, and then there just may be some options we haven't really talked about. Just a recommendation for the town. I don't know the best way to communicate this. I think the Hingham Journal, I think most people get the journal and at least read the front page, that the community knows these conversations are going on. I think that would help. I think people would be relieved, like, yay, there's people meeting on this and there's a plan. Maybe not at the speed we'd all like to see, but I think that might make the broader community just feel like yay i didn't i thought you know i thought i was the only one who was complaining so um you're happy where you're invited to join our monday 10 30 a.m meetings and there are cookies oh uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh maybe my last ask is what is the best way for our committee to communicate with you it seems if we meet occasionally face to face that might be the best way to handle things uh, we'll take you up Mails on that. Are great texts. <laughs> great. We're always doing that, but you know, we with with COVID and whatnot, we've been hiding behind our technology for several years. So um, we have this in-person meeting at 10:30 every Monday at my office uh, in the Old Town Hall downtown. Mm -hmm. I can't promise that your cell phone will work particularly well, but we're very hospitable. <laughs> we'll give you a coffee, um, and people do come in via Zoom, but we also try to come in person. So that's a standing invitation. If you would ever like to join us, would that would be great? Um, give us a little heads up we'll make sure we're there but maybe Excellent. that would be a good first step yeah okay. absolutely good thank, thank you. you art yeah thank oh, you everybody. thank you and i will just say julie submitted a talent bank application and offered to be on this committee that we had didn't have yet and so we <laughs> okay okay <laughs> now we're gonna yeah now you're now you're in <laughs> so thank you but uh, seriously in all seriousness thank you for taking in the initiative no, seeing an issue like and connecting <laughs> good good mark did you want to add us something very quick comment uh, mark collings 44 spring street um, all of this started with social media really and uh, the the downtown association um, the down as uh, lynn has pointed out um, the shop owners the business people downtown uh, were just at their wits end and uh, and social media um, exploded um, 
a few months ago and uh, with the petition, uh, which uh, was um, directed at a specific carrier and generated over a thousand responses uh, in a very short period of time. Uh, and it just uh, showed, to, showed me that there were a lot of rumors, innuendos, and nobody in town really knew what was going on. So our intent was to shine a light on the subject uh, and try to get the facts out there. The town is doing way more than I think the general public knows, and we appreciate it. And um, so we need to keep the pressure on. This is our first step. We don't intend to give it up um, there until you know we want to see uh, a positive outcome uh, on this. And I think the the residents of, of Hingham all do too. And we know as well as it's a uh, shared. Um, issue with our surrounding towns that's not a it's not unique to hingham but uh, so we can we can uh, we want to help so thank you excellent thank you go ahead come on up Justin Aborn to Riverview Road. Thank you very much for having us tonight. Uh, I was so pleased to hear that 911 would work with the text message as well. As you go, that was news to me. I know a lot about telecommunications, but I didn't know that. So I think publicizing that somehow would be a tremendous public service. Uh, and I would also point out that regardless of how well 911 may or may not work for any particular provider, our voice call experiences will depend a lot on which service provider you happen to be a subscriber of. So I think we have to bear that in mind that it's it's not just about 911, as wonderful that is, that is to hear, it's is does this look good on me is a very important call to make. <laughs> uh, I will uh, have been authorized by my compatriots here to ask a particular question, which is a little too narrow for the topic writ large. But I noticed uh, this August up on Turkey Hill that there's an osprey nest up in the cell tower. And I can imagine if we, one of our service providers wanted to give better service to my street, they might want need to climb that tower to re-aim an antenna or something. And boy, I wouldn't want to do it if there's an osprey up there. Uh, so I would ask, uh, I don't know whether anybody would have an answer tonight, but is there a process for relocating an osprey nest if that does impede our private service providers? And with, I'll just leave that question and sit down. Art will climb up. <laughs> <laughs> where's, uh, where's Leslie Badger? Yeah, we need, we need Officer Badger. 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 Badger we need here, right? <laughs> Joe, aren't you running for re-election? <laughs> I don't know. This is a real chance. <laughs> uh, Clark Frazier, uh, 50 Bonnie Briar Circle. I've sort of wandered into this by accident because I was wanted to beat up the electric company for not fixing the bricks on North Street. But while I'm here, we need more osprey nests. Now, what Town of Hall did, they put a, a separate pole up near their switchyard right across the uh, you know the narrow uh, part of the river where the old railroad viaduct was that seemed like uh, if we could have an osprey pole program and you could also then <laughs> Mm -hmm. put maybe a smaller some fill in cell things on it because I don't think they have to go up there that often or maybe they can go up in the winter <laughs> but we need more osprey nests the ones that, <laughs> that I see out in the river there's only one now left and it's in Hull there aren't any in Hingham that I know of okay thank you okay Mark do you want to come up and then someone online <laughs> Mark putting here at 10 Cliff Road. Um, technical question that maybe Mr. Robert knows. I don't have a telecommunication background, so I'm really curious. If I go into other towns around, I'm able to get 5G service. I can't get it anywhere in Hingham. My understanding is that 5G is more small, something that could be located on telephone poles, um, and maybe I'm wrong about that, but 
Um, I know you, in your presentation, you had a couple of small cells you had. Is that directly related to 5G? And is there an opportunity to expand that because they're not as intrusive? As explained to us by uh, one of our infrastructure providers, a small cell installation is about, is about voice. It's not about data. The, the data is coming from the, the larger installations. Okay, thank you. Oh, and as an aside, the Osprey do move out in the winter time. So if somebody <laughs> wants to move in that, that'd be the time. <laughs> Good to know. Uh, Martha? Would you like to speak? Yeah, this is Ryan Carr, uh, 197 North Street. Um, my firm actually invests in some of the telecom infrastructure providers, uh, like the Crown Castles of the world that, that actually build these towers. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just curious, it sounds like you guys have done a lot of good work here. Um, I was wondering if the town or the, or the community action team has um, gotten the, the search rings yet from the carriers, because generally when they look to, to develop new towers, they have concentric circles called search rings as to where they're looking to permit. And that can then tell us, you know, where where they would like to put a tower and how we can maybe assist them in permitting in those locations. And if not, I'd be happy to reach out to my contacts to see if I could figure out where AT and T and Verizon are looking to put search rings or have search rings out to providers in the in the neighborhood. Excellent. Thank you. Great. Thank you. You can take my place. <laughs> I think you've just been recruited for the committee. We like uh, it. Did you want to answer that, Art? Uh, I will try. Okay. Uh, my impression is that information is proprietary. We've had, con in our conversations, we've been able to get to different levels of interest. And the, 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 the highest level of interest has been in the, the Hingham Center area. I think that that's an indication that we're probably, that, lo that location broadly is within the search area of one or more of the carriers. If you can, uh, if you can provide additional classified information, I think we'd welcome that. <laughs> yes, we would. Yeah, no, no problem. Let me do some digging, uh, and if somebody, I, I'm happy to provide my uh, information offline, and uh, I can follow up with folks. But excellent, thank you. Thank you. All right, Joe, did you want to add anything? Um, really, thank you. I mean, this is you have downplayed the importance of your committee. Um, former select board member, former <laughs> planning board member, uh, people who really care about this community, and you're in the, it shows, so we really thank you. I, I do have a couple questions. Um, is there any um, technology for signal boosting that the town could purchase that would enhance signals that are currently available? Have we looked at that? It's not a question we've explored directly. We are aware that uh, the carriers have uh, mobile devices that can add, can add uh, capacity at a given location at a given time. But they're designed for events or like emergency right. response. I'm not sure that there's anything specific that the town could provide in terms of like a, a permanent installation okay. like that. Good question. Um, so the question about search rings and um, placement of cell towers is something that came frequently before the zoning board, when I was on the zoning board. Um, and so that information was presented as part of the public process, but only when, when a carrier uh, wanted to actually have a, a, an antenna installed. And when that happened, there was a fair amount of community resistance. Uh, they do not want the cell tower in their backyard. Um, and so there was a question about whether or not there were, a signal was sent at the time about is Hingham a friendly place to have cell service. So that's something we, should, we may want to look at. But in conjunction with that, has anyone looked at whether or not we should be revising or reviewing our bylaws, particularly the zoning bylaws, uh, in terms of where it is appropriate to allow cell towers? and about the process for that approval. Bruce. Art, you've been working with Emily Wentworth. I mean, she's been involved in those conversations, correct? Well, mostly from a, let's respond to whatever comes forward to us. We haven't had, we haven't gotten down into the detailed conversation about 
why aren't you here? What's the obstacle? What are the three things that if the town could address would move you, move you carrier from inertia to construction? That's something we can certainly look at as to provide as input to consider for zoning changes. Okay, Who's thank you. Go ahead, please. Bruce Rebuffo, One Dwiggins Path. Thank you for allowing us tonight. Um, Art, um, as luck would have it, I'm having lunch tomorrow with a bunch of Verizon people who, who happens to be the main provider in Hingham. In fact, getting some of our data was difficult because we do not have in this town a lot of T-Mobile or AT&T or... Um, I'm missing, or Xfinity, and you can go on. There's a whole bunch. So that's another issue the public could help us on uh, in as we collect data where uh, to identify the weak spots. Uh, regarding 5G, which, as Justin will explain, is we are in transition in this town. Um, we are experiencing what the city of New York did when cell phone service was launched. And in New York City, 5G antennas exist on every corner. Um, I don't think, given the stop sign discussion we just had, um, I don't think that would be appropriate. However, that it's going to come to that. I don't want to scare you. Uh, in 1908, and dot, I wasn't there. <laughs> um, in 1908, there was a guy named Theodore Vale who woke up one morning in Wall Street and he saw all these wires all over the place, but they were independent companies connecting to independent subscribers. And the problem that created, obviously, you, if, depending on which subscriber you belonged to, was whom you could call. Uh, we are not at that stage here, but we're getting there as this expands. This will be a long-term capital problem for the providers. And uh, I'm surprised that you didn't mention South Shore Chamber is not looking at this. Mm -hmm. My contacts say they are. So if you could review with them, Art, that would be very helpful. Okay. So thank you, and I'm glad I'm not sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> Come on up, John. Hello. Hi, I'm John Hi. Rice, 12 Lafayette Avenue as well, and um, I'm also a member of the Cable Advisory Committee, as you know. And uh, just as a little point so people know, uh, as we were negotiating our last contract with Verizon, they insisted on a three-year out on their five-year contract deal with us. Now, the reason that they're doing that, according to our council, is that they want to take and make 5G video out. So they would get rid of their cable connection that they have with 40% of our citizens, and they would replace it with 5G. So in order to do that, they're going to have to do what you're suggesting. So that is something that they asked for in that contract. They might have the intent to do that. It's getting tested around the country. I think New York is one of those places. So that, that might be something that's going to affect how 5G gets uh, delivered as well. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Bill, did you want to add anything? I, I do, yeah, I want to add a couple things. Uh, well, first of all, um, I can assure you, everybody here tonight, everybody watching at home, that there's no people who want to solve this problem more than us. And we're going to continue to get after it. We've heard from residents. We've seen the comments on social media. Um, and we're going to continue to get after it until the problem solves. Uh, I will note, as Art kind of pointed out, some of the efforts. Um, somehow I got appointed to be the point here. I don't really know how I did. But hey. It's a utility happy to in our mind. Yeah, happy to take that <laughs> challenge. But. So we have met with a certain provider several times. Um, there's been at least three meetings. And over the course of those meetings, we have offered that provider some pretty good alternatives to addressing their problem. Um, we talked about the fact that a year ago, AT&T came to us and asked us for grant locations to put smaller cell towers on poles on Fort Hill Street. We moved that as expeditiously as possible. We got those voted in the same, probably the same week they were asked for. and. We offer that to this provider. 
we've offered medium range towers in some other parts of town that might solve a problem in what, what are referred to as dead zones or dead spots. Um, but the provider is yet to act. So um, we are trying to create conditions to allow the problem to be solved, but ultimately it's on the provider to, to move forward. And I think, you know, I had a, I had a great coffee with Mark and um, Bruce uh, a couple weeks ago. Thank you for that. It was very helpful, particularly Bruce's background in this industry. Mm -hmm. And Bruce was right. Bruce said to me, you know, we got to get their attention. We got to do more to get their attention to address this problem. So we're going to keep doing that. Um, I talked to Art um, a couple days ago about reaching out to Congressman Lynch's office. You know, this is a, this is a federally, federally regulated industry. So maybe we can get a contact with the Congressman's office or one of our senators to help us as well. But we're going to continue to make noise and we're going to continue to get after it until we uh, have solved the problem to the best of our abilities. Great. Good. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions or comments from anybody in the room? Oh, any questions or comments from members of the public online? Okay. Excellent. Well, thank you for the presentation. Thank you to thank the you. committee thank for your wonderful you. work. Thank you. Um, certainly, Art, if you'll be the contact and we'll be in touch about the meetings and next steps. Thank you. Moving on, we good? Yep. All right, next on the agenda are appointments. I believe we have one appointment this evening. Did you want to make it? Yep. Um, I would make a motion to appoint David Ellison to the Community Preservation Committee for a three year term ending June 30th, 2026. Second. Uh, roll call vote. Joe? Aye. Bill? Aye. And I'm an aye as well. Motion passes. Okay. Next on the agenda is public comment. Are there any comments from members of the public? That on things we haven't discussed yet. We heard a lot already. Yes. We've discussed everything. I know. This was democracy yeah. at its best tonight. So thank you to everybody that participated. Next on the agenda are town administrator and select board reports. Art? Sure. I have a, a three items. First and foremost, I just want to follow up on uh, an approved special one-day license uh, that uh, town administrator Tom Mayo uh, reviewed. It's for a, the uh, Hingham Youth Football uh, Fall Fundraiser, Saturday, set for Saturday the 23rd uh, with no rain date at located at 18 Shipyard Drive, 6 to 8, excuse me, 6 to 10 p.m. Uh, estimated attendance of about 125 and uh, a police detail is required for that event. Okay. Uh, if I could, I just want to share a reminder regarding uh, a blood drive we're conducting with the American Red Cross here at Town Hall next Tuesday, uh, the 26th from 11 to 4, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. in the Senior Center. Appointments are still available and uh, would encourage folks to call 1-800-RED-CROSS to uh, schedule an appointment if they're so inclined. Uh, one additional item I'd like to share is that uh, we're moving forward on our ADA self-assessment and uh, transition plan. Uh, next Wednesday, uh, the 27th from 7, 8, 7 to 8.30 p.m., uh, we will be uh, conducting, uh, with through the Commission on Disabilities, a hearing on our draft uh, plan, essentially our findings and uh, some recommendations on the path forward. And we're certainly uh, looking for any kind of uh, public input, opportunity to answer questions, uh, all of which would help strengthen the final plan that we will be advancing to the select board. That meeting will be conducted entirely by Zoom, and to, to get information about the details, uh, please go to uh, the self-assessment webpage, which is hingham-ma.gov slash ADA. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle? Just wanted to mention that Tom, our town administrator, sends his regrets. He's homesick this evening, so that's why he wasn't here. Thank you. Thank you. Bill? I um, just want to point out that um, on Sunday I attended the Hingham Congregational Church's 175th Jubilee. Uh, it was really just a wonderful event and a wonderful celebration of a church that has done so much for our community and so much for social justice. And I wanted to congratulate uh, the entire church on 175 years. 
Excellent. Thank you. Joe? Nothing. Okay. Um, I just want to report that the Sustainable Budget Task Force met on September 14th after a little summer hiatus, um, and the group will continue to meet monthly uh, to move forward on the recommendations in that report. Um, I will be attending a library trustees meeting tomorrow night on the 20th um, and just want to remind people that Friday, September 22nd, is Veterans Suicide and Remembrance Day. That's it. I move we adjourn. Second. Roll call vote. Joe? Aye. Bill? Aye. And I'm an aye as well. We are adjourned at 8.19 p.m.